tons of players rotate through this spot. So by setting up here, and I mean like right here, he can potentially open with a bunch of free damage on any unsuspecting players. What's going on guys this is not your ordinary guy no 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 this is your motivation guy that's right your friend the one and only keith allen i am back yes sir with another pro guides video now listen bunch of crunch army man listen we are people who are leaders period like we encourage people we don't spread negativity we spread positivity that's what we do man we change this world one person at a time we motivate people even in the comment section that's what we do bunch of crunch army man let's go so today we're gonna do another what would you do video so excited man today we're gonna be looking at none other than the newly signed nrg clicked the igl mastermind face bizzle and the eu controller legend atlantis let's see here we go so we're gonna run through a few scenarios i'm gonna ask you guys some questions and you take a guess as to what the pro should do all right today it's all about this scrim play style which i'm sure a lot of you guys are trying to get better at right but even if you don't even play them you might still find you know what we go over useful for even arena if you guys really enjoy these videos, a quick like on the video would be awesome. We're going to be doing more of these in the future, man. A lot of you guys love them, so we got to keep dishing them out. So check to see or subscribe so you don't miss them. And once the video is over, let us know in the comments how many of these scenarios you answered correctly. Ladies and gentlemen, Bunch of Crunch Army, it's about that time. Say with me. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that Bunch of Crunch. Let's get this going. All right, so jumping into this thing, here we go. We've got clicks roaming around after just having left his drop spot. All of a sudden, he spots the guy going to fish in the water. So he lines up his aim and he goes for some shots. But clicks only lands one hit. And he also spots a build battle in the background. But not all is bad because he had the health and high ground advantage. So given his loadout and, you know, what you know of the situation, what would you do as clicks here? And I mean, like right here. Use your cross pass to W key, or would you play it safe and leave? Usually, you know, when we think of clicks as an aggressive player, but everything in this scenario says, honestly, don't fight. We saw them going to fish, which means they, they probably already have some. So even clicks got the health advantage. They're definitely going to heal and be incredibly annoying to fight, right? Then there's the build battle he saw, which means there are definitely more nearby players and big potential for third party. And finally, 31 damage just isn't a whole lot. So, Clix does the right thing and he leaves. He could have just been reckless and pushed, but in scrims and customs and, you know, really even in arena for a lot of us, you typically want a pretty big starting advantage before committing to a fight, like a shield crack, you know, for example. Otherwise, disengaging and ensuring you stay alive is the better call. Okay, but later on in the match, Clix finds himself sitting in a bush. Somehow, this enemy player in their wood base spots him. So, they go for some shots, but Clix sees an opportunity. He lands 62 damage, cracking his opponent's shield. Given what you know now, okay, same question as before. Would you use your crash pass to W key, or would you play it safe and leave? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this time, pushing isn't really such a bad idea. A shield crack and two hits means they were likely, you know, only on 150 health, indicating they don't really have anything other than minis. So they're at around 90 health now. Also, a wood base is pretty easy to W key, right? And the fact that they built with wood at all means they probably were in shambles. So Clix goes right in, spraying their wall on the way there so they don't even have time to heal. Clix spots his opponent cone edit, so he does go up above and does a double edit down into peace control. The guy is still in their box, right? So Clix goes for the wall, but his opponent actually catches Clix off guard. But this is why peace control, man, is so important. Because Clix, he can reset the wall and reposition for a nice right hand shot, right? It got scary for a second, but Clix secures the elimination. All right, guys, finally, it's time to look at Lechi, who, by the way, has an exclusive course on our site, which is really, really dope, where he goes over everything that you need to know to become a godly controller player. All right, guys, we also have live classes, in case you didn't know, with some of the best players in the world for all of your entertainment. Click the link in the description to check that out, like, after this video. All right, so we find Lechi chilling at the bridge during the mid game. Tons of players rotate through this spot. 
So by setting up here, and I mean like right here, he can potentially open with a bunch of free damage on any unsuspecting players. You know, it's actually a great strat for when you have nothing else to do during these mid games. Let's see here's a sniper go off just outside so he knows someone's about to approach, right? He crouches toward them and he goes for the hunting rifle shot first. Even though he doesn't connect, it's still worth doing as he's still able to get his charge off too. Okay, so now that they're cracked, let's see ramp boost into their box. And at this point, with the enemy about to build up, let me ask you this, man. What do you think let's should do? Pull out his SMG and just spray or block off his opponent with the cone? All right, so Lechi goes for the peace control play, blocking off his opponent right before they're able to go up a layer. And because of that, he can just quickly end the fight right here. And he's looting. Another opponent comes into third party. Oh, there's another one. So Lechi responds by getting out of his previous opponent's builds ASAP. He attempts a side jump as they take his wall, but he ends up falling and having to reposition into his previous box. His opponent drops at his wall again. So Lechi goes for the peanut butter, that was nice, into a cone block, but gets red like a book right here. He does, however, he responds with a clean pre-fire and he goes into this cone and he tries to peace control him again, but loses the trade. All right, with your opponent at your wall, how would you play this? Be real, come on, what would you do? Go for a window edit or set up a phase ramp in your box. Okay, so I'm sure you guys know about this ramp face trick, right? Where you put your back against the wall and you place a ramp so you can edit and just shoot through it. But Lechi uses it all the time to deal with aggressors. It's actually pretty underutilized, I think. And in this case, Lechi cracks his opponent's shields with ease. So they go to drink a big pot, but instead of doing that, they run right toward Lechi and they feed him another kill. Finally, there's a third player that comes to challenge Lechi. So the first thing he's going to do is figure out where they are, then expand his base so that he has more room to work with. Then they try pickaxing Lechi's metal floor. Okay, so if you were in this spot, what would you do? Edit the floor open and just go for a charge shot or edit the back and just go for high ground. Well, you know, his opponent makes the mistake of attacking a fully built metal structure, so they likely just can't even see Lechi. That means Lechi has the element of surprise right here. So he edits and he hits a clean shot for 115. After that, Lechi immediately goes on the offensive. Smart, this is what you should do. Building up and making sure to cover his head on the way there. Try to remember, man, that when you're building up to someone, speed isn't usually the most important factor. Making sure that you don't get shot, that is <laughs> the most important factor, okay? But in the end, he gets another cone block off and he secures this kill too. You know, what I love most about all of these kills definitely has to be Leshy's peace control, especially with those cones, man. It allowed him to finish the first kill quick, just in time for the second, right? And if it wasn't for that, he may probably not have survived. Okay, guys, we gotta move on. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Game Sense Genius Phase Bizzle. Here he is <laughs> in a pretty stacked solo scrim. And typically, you need some sort of rotation item to even think about placing the top 10 of these matches. Unfortunately, Bizzle doesn't have any, but good thing he's a rotational mastermind and he knows the right tricks and moves to survive, right? Okay, so Bizzle's safe in the second zone with 52 players remaining. The storm's about to close and his loadout consists of an AR, shoddy, and a bunch of heals, including some floppers. When the third zone arrives, Bizzle gets favored. Don't we love when that happens? He checks his surroundings and the coast looks clear, but he still has a decision to make. All right. Should he stay at his current location or rotate to a better spot? Hmm. Okay, so I know that the term better spot sounds a little vague, but okay. In this case, one definitely exists. The center of the zone and in particular, the gazebo area. Why the center though? Well, okay, so it maximizes your chances of getting favored for the next zone, which is true for both the second and third, right? Since this is the third zone, if his position's near the center, he's more likely to already be in the next once it arrives. As for why he chooses the gazebo, 
It's just so that he has some natural structures to replace with his own builds. That way, he could just create a larger base without losing mats. It's also worth noting, man, that he also temporarily drops his chuck splashes for a sniper, just because he might be able to find a pick while he's here. But really, man, Bizzle just needs to play the waiting game until the next zone arrives, okay? And when it does, look at that, he's already inside, wow. So setting up in the center definitely paid off, but for zone number four here, Bizzle wants to remain near the edge. The center is not the play since zone five, aka the half in, half out circle, always spawns somewhere on the edge. And with that, it's just better to play the edge if you're there. Take the gamble and hope it favors you. In this case, however, the gamble doesn't really pay off. Bizzle's going to need to rotate pretty far to get into this next zone. But check out this little play he tries to make. Knowing there's still an enemy to the east, he edits some walls, open to fate that he's already rotated. And then he hides inside his cone and he waits for the player to rotate through his old base. It doesn't end up leading to anything, but it's definitely an interesting play. Okay, so with the storm on the move, it's time to rotate, man. Bizzle gets ready to start swimming when he spots a player pad next to him. Now, he could definitely just recycle this pad, but is that the right move? Like, what would you do? Just swim it or would you take the pad? Bizzle's a clever guy, he really is, and he decides not to take the pad. Why? Good question. There's water that leads directly to the next zone, meaning he doesn't have to run it. And since everyone's going to focus on binging the patters, Bizzle can just sneak in scot-free. He does this and he immediately builds up so that he's not on the congested low ground layer. Okay, so switching vertical layers so you're not next to a boatload of enemies, man, that's a massive concept when it comes to avoiding enemies in the end games. It's a bit of a hard concept to understand at first, but okay, basically, if you notice a spot above or below you with fewer enemies to your side, it's often worth building up or going down and just making a new box. All right, guys, now let's look at the moving zones. Remember, Bizzle doesn't have mobility, so he's gonna conserve mats in a few ways. First, by dropping to the low ground just so that he can just use enemy builds and not have to build floors. Second, he's using efficient tunneling methods like his two-piece tunnel with just a wall and floor. And third, he's gonna play the edge of the storm so that he doesn't have to worry about covering that side. Anyways, all right, as Bizzle tarps in, he loses a ton of health after making the unfortunate mistake of not covering his back. But this is exactly why the triple heal loadout Bizzle runs is so strong, and it's a loadout we see a ton from more passive pros like him. Compare that to if he didn't get floppers or decide to carry chuck splashes. He'd be in an entirely different situation. And look at this point, he needs to rotate ASAP. But with that loadout, he has a bit of a choice. Should Bizzle, here we go, make a flopper play in the storm or keep tunneling? So materials are a precious thing to Bizzle, so he decides to tank a bit of Storm just so that he can just go through previous builds to save his own. When he makes it back in, the first thing he's going to do is try to get to a safer layer and move back to the edge of the Storm. As he runs low on mats, it's time for an impact frag. So Bizzle slips into an enemy's tunnel and he manages a really, really nice wall take into cone control to get the kill. Right toward the last seconds of the match, Bizzle runs low on Matt, so he drops down low and he looks for an limb before being blasted into the storm by the overpowered shockwave launcher. There's really not much, you know, he could have really done here, <laughs> except maybe try a height play with his grappler, but either way, fourth place, despite no mobility, that's pretty good. All right, guys, so I hope these tips really helped. We got to do a recap because, you know, that's just what we do. A big aspect of taking fights and scrims has to do with the starting advantage you have. So always pay attention to things like your opponent's potential health, what kind of heals they have, and really the potential for third parties. That way, you can be a lot more confident in pushing for the kill. All right, guys, so let's you wipe the floor with three opponents using a few simple strategies. First, you know, lots of cone control to block off opponents. Second, the ramp face technique when they were trying to take his wall. And third, he wasn't afraid to go for an edit shot when he was inside metal, since that makes it a whole lot harder for enemies to spot you. As for where you should position for the mid and late games, all right, for circles two and three, center is best if you want to be favored. And for circle four, you stay where you are, even if you're on the edge. How much you get focused during the end game has to do with what layer you're on. So it's often best you try to build up to your own layer or one that's not very populated. During the end game, materials are just really hard to come by, so it's just crucial for you to conserve as much as possible by using enemy builds and tunneling efficiently. 
All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. We got so much going on. We're trying to get to this million on this channel, man. And uh, yo, we got some cool stuff coming out. We'll see you soon. Eat that bunch of crunch, and I'm out.